All right, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Eric Ritchie. I'm with the customer engagement team here at Autodesk with Reality Solutions. Uh, today we have with us Heidi Hewitt from the AutoCAD group. We're going to be talking about the, you know, the recap to AutoCAD workflow, uh, you know, using your point clouds within uh, within AutoCAD. So, you know, if, for those of you that are familiar with uh, with you know, go to webinar. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to type them in to the uh, the little question widget at the side of your screen. Um, you know, we'll we'll take those questions and we'll answer as many as we can at the end of the session. Um, you can also see the note here. We're recording this, so we'll be posting it on our uh, on our YouTube channel after the uh, within the next couple of days. You know. It, takes uh, takes a little time but uh, we'll be posting the recording um, and then you know also we're always encouraging you guys to send us feedback so you see there recap.community at autodesk.com you know feel free to reach out to us we you know we appreciate the feedback um, you know if you have suggestions for other sessions you'd like to uh, you know you'd like to see you know if you have additional follow-up questions whatever that may be you know feel free to reach out to us um, you know otherwise uh, we'll show you here just uh, kind of a list of some of the things that you can some of the places you can interact with us, you know, as I mentioned, our YouTube channel. But we'll uh, we'll come back to this again at the end of the session. So, with that, I'd like to introduce Heidi. Welcome, Heidi. Great, thank you. So, yeah, thank you all for attending today, and uh, I'm excited to be able to take you through on this tour of uh, Point Cloud tools in AutoCAD 2016. So to start with, I've got several different data sets I'm going to be working through today just to show you some of the different um, features. The first thing I want to show you is just kind of getting started here. If you want to attach a point cloud file, so you've maybe used um, Recap to create a project out of your scan files. You can create either um, uh, Recap scan files or project files. Once you've done that, you come into AutoCAD then um, the first step is to attach those point cloud files. And if we go to the insert ribbon tab here, you'll see that we have this point cloud panel. Um, you can also even just go to the XREF uh, manager. I'll just pull that up real quickly. Um, so in the XREF manager in AutoCAD, you'll see that along with DWG files and images and other types of files that you can attach to your AutoCAD drawings, you'll see that point cloud is an option there as well. So that's another way that you can attach your um, recap files. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and just choose attach here in the point cloud panel and um, navigate out to where I have my point cloud. In this case I've got a project file. I could also attach individual scan files. So if we look at the files of type here you'll see the, the two types of files that are supported in AutoCAD 2016. I'm going to go ahead and choose this serpent mound um, project file, recap project file. And I'll go ahead and open that, and you'll see in the attach dialog box, this if you've used AutoCAD at all to attach anything, this should look really familiar to you. Um, we have, you know, a, a insertion point, scale, rotation, all these options that we can use to specify how that point cloud file is going to be attached to our current drawing. Um, if you look at show details down here in the lower left corner, you'll see that you can view additional information about that point cloud file that you're about to attach, that scan file or project file. So for example, we know that this project file has um, normal information, classification, segmentation data, and I'll talk a little bit more about some of those here in a few minutes once we get into the drawing. But the other thing I want to point out in this particular uh, drawing in point cloud file is that one of the options that you have if your drawing is geolocated, if it has a geographic location in it, which my current drawing does. Um, you can see I've got this online map here, so I've actually specified a, a geographic location using my AutoCAD online maps tool. So if my drawing is geolocated and if the point cloud project that I'm about to attach also has a um, geographic location in it, then rather than specifying the um, insertion scale rotation, having to specify that yourself, you can just choose geographic location to use that information and you'll see it grays out these other options. So now I don't even have to specify or insert it or anything you know, manually. 
because that point cloud file and the um, current AutoCAD drawing have that geographic location, I can just choose to use that and that point cloud file is automatically inserted into my drawing in the correct position at the right scale and um, at the right rotation. So if we zoom in here to this file, let's just take a look. This is Serpent Mound, as I mentioned. This is a um, formation here in, I think it's in Ohio. I can't remember exactly. Uh, but anyway, you can kind of see the on the point cloud file, and below that you can see the, the online map that we have, and it's positioned it exactly on top of each other. A little bit hard to see um, because this point cloud file is currently just being displayed all white, so it's kind of hard to see um, the data there, the shape of that point cloud file. So what I'm going to do is just take you through some of the tools that are available for visualizing your point clouds in AutoCAD. If you select a point cloud that's attached to your AutoCAD drawing, you'll see that it automatically displays the contextual ribbon tab in AutoCAD that's specifically for point cloud. So all the point cloud tools that you might want to use are right there at your fingertips in that point cloud um, ribbon tab. So with that point cloud selected, uh, what I want to do is look at some of these different scan colors. And this kind of gets back to some of those options uh, that I was mentioned when we attached the point cloud file. Uh, depending on what type of data is available in that point cloud file, you may be able to visualize it within AutoCAD uh, using normal information. You can see if I choose that, it's a lot easier to see that shape of the serpent mound here, um, just using the different, uh, different color or visualization options. So that was normal. Um, if your data file, if your point cloud file has classification information, then you can use that option as well. Um, so, for example, if I choose to view it by classification, then using this color mapping tool right here enables you to see, depending on the different ways that you're viewing, whether it's intensity, elevation, or classification, you can view and um, kind of analyze your point cloud using these diff this different type of data. I'll go ahead and try the elevation one just so you can kind of get a, a good feel for that. So if we choose to view it, to visualize it with elevation information, and then we look at our color mapping, and you see here we've got our elevation tab. Now I'm going to go ahead and change this from these, this earth color scheme. I'll change it to spectrum and display it as gradient. So we've got it kind of gradiating between these, these colors. And then there's a ver various different options you can choose. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the apply to extents, and instead I'm going to specify um, sort of the, the range of elevation that I want these colors to be applied to, just so we can get a better idea for this particular location um, what the elevation is. Okay, so I've applied the maximum and minimum elevation. We'll go ahead and choose OK there. And now you can see that, again, this is a different way of visualizing the same data, and we can see, again, more obviously what that serpent mound is and the different elevations that that's at. So that is a little bit about some of these visualization tools, um, color mapping. Now, in this case, it's kind of hard to see between the point cloud, which is overlaid on the map, or you might have other AutoCAD geometry there. Sometimes the point cloud data can get in the way and obscure the other information you want to see. So there is this transparency control where you can make that point cloud um, a little bit more transparent. So you see as I increase the transparency, then it's easier to see the other data, which in this case is the online map data that's underneath it. And you can see again that it's overlaid perfectly on that because we use that geographic location information. All right, so that's a little bit about visualization. I'm going to go ahead and close this drawing and open up another one with um, Let's see, with another point cloud file. So next we'll look at the tech shop. These are some uh, scans from uh, the interior of a building. And uh, some of the things that I want to point out to you here are just some of the management tools that you can use with your point clouds. So here I've got a drawing in AutoCAD. The point cloud file is already attached. And I'm looking at it here from the top, top view, plan view. And if we go ahead and select that point cloud file, then again, you'll see that we have our contextual ribbon tab. 
Now I mentioned previously that um, this is basically an externally referenced file. So one of the tools that you have available in the Point Cloud Ribbon tab is access to the XREF manager. And if we select that, you'll see that our um, Point Cloud file is attached just like any other reference file would be displayed here in the reference manager. Um, the Point Cloud Manager, let's go ahead and open that. And this is just sort of a palette that lets you control the, the display of the Point Cloud files that are attached. Now in this case, I have a project file attached, and that project file references many different scan files. So the list over here that I see, um, these are the different scan files that are making up all these points here for this, this tech shop. And you can control the visibility if you just turn off or on any of these different um, files. You can maybe see over there that some of the points are disappearing. There's a lot of, lot of files there, so slowly they're disappearing. And you can turn them on or off you know, right here at the scans level to turn all of them quickly on or off. If you have um, regions that were created, you can't create regions within AutoCAD, but if you use Recap, uh, then you can create different regions. So for example, um, I'm just going to turn off any points that are not currently assigned to a region. So some of the points disappear there. And what I'm left with are these three different regions that again were defined within Autodesk Recap. And if you want, say you're working on a specific area, maybe the, the locker hallway or the storage room, this is a really easy way for you to kind of zero in on those different areas for, for doing your design work. So maybe I'll just turn off everything except for the wood shop. So that's all that's displayed there. So those are just some of the tools for visualization. Again, using these um, regions, controlling by region, does require that those regions were created with, within Recap. You can view them in AutoCAD, but you have to create them in Recap. There are some other tools that are available in AutoCAD 2016 that enable you to get similar um, functionality using crop states. I'm going to go ahead and close this model now and open a different one where we can look at some of those crop states. So this file, this is actually um, some scans that we did of Red Rocks Amphitheater, which is in, in Colorado. And this is just a very small part of the, of the data set right around the stage area. And if we look at that, you'll see that we've got the stage here on the left side, and then we've got this new model that we're, we're kind of working on designing. I'm just going to go ahead and hide that geometry right now so that all we're looking at is the point cloud. So we just have the point cloud data displayed right now. Um, now let's say we want to focus either maybe on the stage area or the parking lot or here we've got the, the south tower and where the dressing rooms are. Um, navigating around there, especially if we had the entire data set with the, the whole amphitheater, that would be quite a lot of um, navigating that we have to do. You may want to just focus on one certain area of it. So even if the regions weren't created in recap in the, the point cloud file, there is some functionality within AutoCAD where you can create crop states. So for example, if I just kind of go to more to a plan view here, select my point cloud, which again gives me all my tools that are relevant for it. Now to do cropping in AutoCAD, you do need to be in a parallel projection instead of perspective. So I'm just going to go over here to the view cube and change it to parallel. And then uh, again, selecting my point cloud, I'll go ahead and use my cropping tools, which are now no longer grayed out. So we've got different ways of cropping. You could, you know, if you've got an odd shape, you might want to use the polygonal, or if you've got, um, you know, maybe a circular area, you could crop out. I'm just going to do a rectangular area because the stage area is pretty, pretty much rectangular. So I pick two points to define the rectangle that I want to focus on, and I want to keep the points inside. So it's not getting rid of any data, all it's doing is sort of blanking out everything else, either inside or outside of the area that I selected. And that is in 3D, it's from whatever view you're at. So I could potentially create another, like maybe this is just extra stuff over here that I don't really need. So I could get to a view where I could just block that out easily. So rather than doing it from plan view now, I've got some other you know, kind of random view here. 
And if I use my crop tool again, whether I use rectangular or any of these other options, I can go ahead and maybe I want to just crop this stuff out. So I don't want to keep what's inside in this case. I want to keep what's outside of that rectangle that I specified. So you can just, using all kinds of different views, you can get rid of whatever it is that you don't want within that, that display. And once you've got that, if I know this is something I'm going to be coming back to often, this particular view where I want to just see the stage area, then you can go up here to the cropping um, panel. And right now I don't have any saved crop states. But if you go to this button over here, New Crop State, and select that, and then you can see here it's asking me for the name of the crop state. I'll call this one Stage. Okay, so I've saved that as a crop state, and now I'll just uncrop all, so I have all the data back again. And maybe I want to do something similar over here with this um, the South Tower. So again, whatever view makes sense to me, I can go ahead. Maybe this one I'll do a polygonal shape. So I'll just pick a few points here to define my cropping area. And I want, in this case, I want the inside, not the outside. So I've got that again. That's the South Tower at Red Rocks. I'll save that as a crop state. Call it South Tower. Okay, so with those defined, at any point it's very easy for me to uncrop everything or go up to my cropping panel and choose between those crop states that I've already saved previously. So it makes it really easy to navigate around, even if you haven't gone into recap and defined those regions. Okay, so what next? We talked about um, cropping. Hopefully those all make sense, the different cropping tools. And even if you have cropped, like I've got the stage displaying right now, you can just show and hide easily up here. If you want to see everything quickly, you can unhide or, yeah, <laughs> show everything, or you can get it back to where you're just seeing the cropping area. All right, the next thing I want to talk to you are some, some um, new tools in AutoCAD 2016 to help support and help you work with and get data, get information from your point cloud. So again, I'll select the point cloud, and I just love this, basically in AutoCAD where you can select, select objects and you get the contextual ribbon tab for relevant objects. That way you don't have to remember all the different commands that are applicable, for example, to point clouds. I've got them all right there. So what we want to do now is uh, create a section plane. And if we just choose section plane here, this is a tool that's been in AutoCAD for quite a while now, um, but until AutoCAD 2016, it did not work with point clouds. Now in AutoCAD 2016, not only does section plane enable you to cut sections through your solids and surfaces, but it also lets you cut sections through point clouds. So for example, I could just choose maybe a top section Maybe you want to figure out, you know, dimension or whatever, um, exactly where the columns are in this design for the structure. Um, or if you select that section plane, you'll actually get um, a contextual ribbon tab just for the section plane. And you could use this tool to rotate. So I can look at different, different views, rotates 90 degrees around that um, section plane. Uh, you can also, I'm going to go ahead and erase this section plane, and that was just an orthogonal one. Instead, what I want to do is create a section plane um, by specifying two points. So doing that, I choose my two points, and I'm going to pass the cursor over the front of the stage. And as I do that, notice that it's detecting a plane right here. So if your point cloud file has segmentation data associated with it, and that's something that you can see when you attach the point cloud file and you open up the details, um, like I showed previously, if it says that it has segmentation data, you've got a lot more power when you're working in AutoCAD because it can actually use that, those sets of points to define different things and help you create new geometry. Uh, in this case, I've got, I passed the cursor over, it, it sees that there's a whole bunch of points there that, there that are kind of lined up on a plane, so it detects that and sort of treats it as a plane. I'm going to go ahead and just pick two points, um, two, pick two points there. Oh, I realize I don't have my 3D object snaps on, but that's okay, I'm going to just pick that point, and I think it detected right on that plane, okay. So I've got that plane defined. Um, we'll talk about object snaps in just a second. So 
So it defined that plane, and um, now if I select that, I get, again, my contextual ribbon tab for section plane. A new option in AutoCAD 2016 is the ability to not just have a plane, but to actually do a thin slice where that plane is. So I'm going to go ahead and create a slice, and here I can either use grips to move this slice exactly where I want to be. For example, if I want to you know, figure out what the structure is, what a cut through this structure is, um, or I can enter values. I'm just going to go ahead and enter, I think it's minus 100, just to get me right to the, the area that I want. And I'll just do a very thin section. So this is an elevation, but you could imagine doing this on a floor plan as well. If you wanted to get the existing floor plan, you could just do a, a horizontal plane through the, the existing conditions and create a very thin slice. And then using um, new tools in AutoCAD 2016, you can generate geometry from that. So here, let me just kind of rotate around. You can see that I've got this very thin slice through my point cloud. Now, if we go up here to our um, tools for our section plane, one of the new tools in AutoCAD 2016 is the ability to extract section lines. If I go ahead and choose that tool, um, then it will let me select which point cloud I want to extract from because I could have multiple point clouds attached to this drawing. So I'll go ahead and choose my point cloud file. And then here, it's prompting me for, um, I can enter different information for how I want to extract the data. Um, what color I want to use, it's actually going to create lines through the structure where the points are, where it sees a series of points. Um, I can have it, I can specify how many points to process. The higher the points, the longer it will take to process, um, but the more accurate that it will be. And then I can also um, enter tolerances here. I can do a preview of the result. So depending, you know, how high this is and um, if you preview, this will take, can take a little bit longer, the higher that you go here, and depending what some of these other settings are. But the nice thing is, I'm going to go ahead and choose Create here. So it's processing, and we can see the bar down here. I don't have it set too high, so it shouldn't take very long. Um, but as it goes through and processes that information, the first time that it does it, it can take a little bit longer. But if you have Preview turned on, then it will actually let you see that data, these green what you see here, that those are the lines it's about to generate, real lines in AutoCAD that I can then use and manipulate and start creating geometry and re redesigning for my project. Um, if you want to um, go back to the settings, so I did a preview here, and you can see on the command line that we have this option where we can either accept what it's created already, or we can go back to the settings. If I go back to the settings, uh, then I can maybe modify these a little bit. I'm going to change the line length to two, um, two inches and the connect line tolerance, I'm going to change that. I think I'll try two feet. Okay, so whatever it is, you can change, you know, kind of mess with these. And the nice thing is that as you change some of, some of these settings here um, and do a preview, it doesn't have to reprocess everything the way that it did the first time. So it's much quicker the second time. So I make some changes. I'll go ahead and just accept those, just so you can see that we've actually got some, some data there now. I'm going to select the um, section plane, and I'll just erase that. And I'll just hide this um, point cloud file so that we can see the geometry it actually created. So right there, you can see now we've got real lines in AutoCAD that we can start working with, extend, trim, do whatever we need to if we want to start redesigning our project. All right, so that's one tool. That was all using the section plane, which again has been in AutoCAD for a while, but now has been extended to be more powerful using point cloud files. I'm going to go ahead and erase this data, and I will um, end the object isolation so I get all of my objects back on here. And we'll select that point cloud file and um, uncrop all for now. So we've got everything displayed, the point cloud and this new geometry. So here, as I mentioned, this is Red Rocks Amphitheater here in Colorado, and this has been around for a long time. This, this structure is designed to really integrate with the natural rock formations. And so the existing conditions are very important. If, if they do any uh, renovation or adding on to, um, to the amphitheater, it's really important that they integrate with the existing um, conditions. Here in the back, you can see the rocks that actually are part of the building in some of these floors, the back wall of the, 
the um, star's dressing rooms are actually rock, rock walls. So it's really important. This is where point cloud files can be incredibly valuable because trying to design some of those rock formations in AutoCAD would be um, virtually impossible. Uh, with point clouds and, and doing 3D scans, this is a great example of being able to capture the existing conditions and, the de and then design from there. So just keep in mind so this structure that we have where we'd be adding on several floors and this kind of curvy organic shape that, that goes with the um, existing conditions. And I'm going to go ahead and right now I'll just isolate the point cloud so that that's all we see. Oops. But keep that those other structures in mind. And let's see how we can take advantage of some of the tools in AutoCAD 2016 with point clouds so that we can start creating that type of geometry to add on to this design. You can see here that we've got um, curves. This, this wall is really curved here. We've got some sharp edges here along the, um, the building. Let's take a look at some of the point cloud object snaps because those are key for generating new geometry here from AutoCAD. If we go in here um, to your customization um, tool on the status bar, by default, the 3D object snaps are turned off when you install AutoCAD, but if we go in here to customization, if, if you use 3D often, then you'll want to turn on the 3D object snap um, option on the status bar. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And now you can see here I've got a 3D object snap tool added to my status bar. And if we open that up, we'll see many new object snaps for specifically for point clouds here in AutoCAD 2016. So the first one that we want to use is, um, actually before I do that, before we talk about those um, object snaps, let me just show one other thing that's new in 2016, and that is the ability to automatically align your, your UCS with faces in your point cloud, as if they're really objects. Again, AutoCAD can use the segmentation data in the point cloud to align with. And I think I need to turn on my dynamic UCS. So another tool that's off by default on the status bar is dynamic UCS. Again, if you're working in 3D, you'll want to turn that on. So that's this tool right here. So we turn that on. And let's just say I want to draw some maybe circular or rectangular or some, some type of object on the face of these this existing um, building. I'm just going to use the circle command just to be very quick here. As I pass the cursor around, you'll see that it's automatically detecting those faces, again, taking advantage of that segmentation data. So without me having to tell it where the UCS should be, I can just pass my cursor over this face on the building and begin drawing. So I've got a circle drawn there. I'll just repeat the circle command, come over to this side of the building, and again, it detects um, that face. Now this is a little bit hard to see. Here's the circle right there. But again, this is where that um, transparency comes in handy. If you select the point cloud file and increase transparency, now it's much easier to see that geometry that we created. But I'm going to go ahead and put transparency back because I want, I want you to be able to see um, the information here easily. Oops, I didn't want to erase that. Okay, I'll just undo back back before I had the circles. All right, so that was dynamic UCS, now supports point clouds. Boy. Okay, the next thing I want to show is those object snaps. So here we have our 3D object snaps, and the first one we'll look at is this corner object, or not the corner, the edge object snap. So snap to nearest to edge of point cloud. If we turn that on, and let's say we want to create a line along the edge of this wall. So we've got this corner. Maybe we want to create a line here that we're eventually going to revolve to continue this curved shape for our new building. As you pass the cursor over, see that AutoCAD is detecting, um, is detecting these different faces. So as I pass the cursor over there, let me just, oh, I don't have my object snap on. There we go. So that was segmentation data, what it was finding. Now it's actually finding the object snaps. So as I pass my cursor over the edge, because I have that edge object snap turned on, it detects, using segmentation data, it's detecting the edge of that building, and now I can snap right to it. 
using that segmentation data and that edge uh, object snap. So I just drew a line along the edge of that building. Let's look at some of these other ones. I won't go through all of them, but just to give you an idea. Um, another one is corner, so instead of the edge, where it was finding two planes that intersect to find the edge, in this case we're going to look for the corner. And I'll draw another line, I guess. So we'll come down here. And if I pass the cursor over this area, you'll see that with the walls here, there are three different planes now because I'm looking for a corner object snap. So it finds three planes of segmentation, segmentation data and lets me snap to the corner of those. And as you move around, you'll see it's finding different planes. So that's another, um, and if I come up here, let's see if I can find another plane right there. Okay, so there's the, the corner up above. So that's just giving me initial geometry. Um, let's go back to this first line I created. So we've got this, this edge of the building, a line right here that I've created, and what I really want to do is take that line and just continue it along this curve. Well, there's a handy object snap that finds the center of the cylindrical shape. If we go down here to our object snaps again, and let's turn on this one nearest to center line of cylinder on a point cloud. So if we choose that, now this can work if you're maybe um, inside a building and you want to find the, the center of piping or something like that, any kind of cylindrical shape. In this case, I've got a very large cylindrical shape here, which is the, um, the building. So I want to go ahead and draw a line along the axis of rotation. So starting the line command, as I pass the cursor over, notice that it is detecting this cylindrical shape of the building and I'll just go ahead and pick a point which draws it at the center of that cylindrical shape and I'm going to draw it straight up my z-axis so there I've just got a line that I'm going to use as the center of my rotation and then using AutoCAD tools let's go, go to the 3D modeling workspace so using my AutoCAD tools surfaces or solids in this case I'll do a surface and I want the Revolve tool, and I'll go ahead and choose this line right here that I created. It's kind of hard for you to see that, but hopefully you remember us creating that. So that's the line I want to revolve, and I want to revolve it around um, this object. Oops. So I want to revolve it around this line right here. And there you can see, let's see, I want to reverse the direction though. So this is a great way for us to take advantage of existing conditions, use our point cloud information, and then start, start drawing and creating our model from there. And I'll go ahead and give you some idea. I'll go ahead and erase that and then turn on our project so you can see kind of where you can head from there. Now one of the things to point out in this particular design, it was really important that the new building uh, be at the same level as the existing structure. So for example, if the stars want to walk right out of their dressing rooms right onto the stage, they want it to be at the same level. That's where things like the visualization that we looked at in the other point cloud file where you can use the um, visualization tools to get your elevation. That's the kind of thing where this can be incredibly helpful, combining all these different point cloud tools uh, depending on the type of task that you're trying to accomplish. All right, let me see what, if there's anything else. We talked about um, talked about object snaps. Um, oh, some other things here. We talked about all the cropping, so I think we're pretty good up to there. Um, there's just some tools. These are standard AutoCAD tools, like changing your how you display you know, perspective or parallel. Um, some of the walk tools or orbit different tools here, just for navigating through. They're right here, available in the contextual point cloud ribbon tab, but they're also available as you've probably seen me using either through the view cube or doing shift middle mouse button to orbit, so the standard standard tools. Um, the point size, this is an interesting one. If we just kind of zoom in further, you'll see that as we zoom in, now this, these are pretty good scans, a lot of detail. There are different ways to control the display of this. If you go to your options, um, without anything selected, if you go to your options dialog box in 3D modeling, you'll see that um, here we have the maximum point cloud points per drawing. By default, I think this is set to maybe 
I don't know, 100 or 1 million, something like that. Um, but I cranked it way up here. I can't remember what the default is, but I always just crank it all the way up. Um, that way you get as many points displaying as possible. If you um, select the point cloud and have access to the contextual ribbon tab, then you'll see another control over here uh, for the level of detail. And again, that's just letting you um, control visually how many points are being displayed. If you have fewer points displayed, then it's going to be better performance. Um, but really, AutoCAD, if you have a, you know, a, a decent machine, AutoCAD is really quick, as you've probably seen here as I've been navigating, even if I have a lot of detail, a lot of points displayed. Um, but another option is, let's just say I turn down the detail, maybe for, to help performance. Um, there is this option for point size. So you could, right now, every point is being displayed as just one single um, point, point or pixel. If you increase the point size, then it still has the same number of points, but it's just making them bigger. So sometimes that can be helpful just to have fewer points, but you want to be able to see it, you know, ah, that doesn't look good. <laughs> It's a little, little too big, but um, maybe put it down just a little bit. But it can be helpful if you have you know, fewer points, but you want to kind of fill in some of the gaps. So just something to, to look at there. I usually keep my point size down at one and just increase my detail because I have a pretty good machine and its performance is really good in AutoCAD anyway. All right, I think I covered everything that I wanted to cover with point clouds. They're really straightforward, easy to use. Um, this is something I have definitely gotten very interested in. I think it's the, the direction that people are heading, being able to capture their existing conditions with scanning, just like we capture our 2D conditions um, now, just as, as, as a matter of habit, um, by scanning 2D documents. This is a great way to get the existing conditions um, for real objects in 3D space. So we'll go ahead and switch back over and um, open it up for questions. And while we're kind of doing that, we'll also display some of these links if you want to write any of these down, some of the resources that you can turn to. So Eric, I think we're ready for questions. All right. Well, thanks, Heidi. That was great. You know, as uh, as we mentioned, you know, feel free to ask questions, you know, type them right into the little widget there and, uh, you know, we'll try to get to as many as we can. Um, you know, one thing one thing that kind of came up, uh, you know, we have the um, you know, we, we talked about the uh, you know, Heidi talked about the the segmentation, you know, that's that's a. Uh, that's a really kind of exciting, you know, sort of behind the scenes thing coming out of, uh, you know, coming out of recap. And so, so the question is, you know, is that available in recap, which is the free version, or is that a recap 360 and recap 360 ultimate, uh, feature? Um, I can, I can actually take that one. So that's, that's, you know, one of the advantages of going through recap for, you know, for your point cloud data. So we're, we're generating that in all of the versions. So even if you only have, you know, the free version of recap, you're still able to take advantage of, you know, that segmentation data and, you know, all of these features within, you know, AutoCAD or, you know, whatever other piece of your workflow. Um, you know, just just uh, for the sake of you know reminder, um, you know, as of as of the 2016 releases, you know, we have on the recap side, we have two products. We have Recap and Recap 360. Um, you know, Recap is a completely free product. You can download that. You know, whether you have any other um, products or not. You can just go download that from our website. Um, you know, it's also the one that ships with the suites. Recap 360 is a uh, is a desktop subscription. You know, that gives you all sorts of you know extra tools uh, for markup and some smart uh, measurements and annotations and all of that. And then Recap 360 Ultimate is if you need all the registration features. Um, you know, so just uh, as I mentioned, kind of a, a reminder, but, you know, things like the segmentation data that uh, that Heidi talked about, those are available in all of the versions. Um, so that's that's a really, uh, really cool thing. Um, Heidi, here's here's one for you. So these uh, a lot of these tools you were showing, are these also available in Civil 3D? 
as far as I know, all of them are available in Civil 3D. I haven't tried it myself, so I'm always a little bit hesitant to, to say that, but I don't know of any that aren't available in Civil 3D, because that's, that is a huge market for, for scanning and point clouds. Okay. Um, so here's one. Uh, you know, so when we talk about bringing our recap data into AutoCAD, you know, can you, I can, I can also help with this a bit, but um, so we have the, the RCP, the recap, you know, project file and the RCS, you know, the recap scan file. Um, you know, do you want me to talk about the difference between those? We, we have a, you know, a question about that um, just in terms of, you know, what they kind of, what they kind of mean and, you know, what, what comes along with those. Do you want that one or should I take that? Um, yeah, you go ahead. Yeah, okay. So, about that. <laughs> so the, the, the RCP, the recap project file. So, you know, Heidi was showing you the, you know, the scan locations, the, the regions, all of that sort of thing. Um, you know, what that is, you know, that's all coming from an RCP file. An RCS file is your, you know, your point cloud. Um, it's, it could be either a single scan uh, if you're if you're just bringing over one scan, or it could be uh, you know what we call a unified RCS. So it could be your entire project um, defined you know as a single point cloud file, and that's that's the RCS file. You know again, so the RCP is usually usually the one you want to work with because you know all of your regions that are generated, you know some of that other um, metadata and project data. In addition, you know if you if you unify and create an RCS file, you know, a lot of times, um, well, uh, part of part of that unification process is you'll you you'll lose, you know, some of those independent scan positions. You know, we call them the the real views with the panoramic panoramic images and all of that. So so really, you know, the the um, you know, you can you can bring in a single RCS if that if that works for uh, you know for what you're trying to do. But uh, you know, the RCP file, you know, that project file, you know, that that gives you you know even more uh, even more to work with. So you know, as I said, those those independent scan locations, the the regions, you know, all of that. So that's really kind of the distinction between those. Uh, let's see what else do we have, and you know. Again, feel free everybody to continue submitting your questions. You know, we'll try to try to get to as many as possible. Um, all right, Heidi, I think this one is for you because I don't know the answer to it. Uh, the there's a question about deformation analysis for facades. Is that uh, <laughs> I don't know that either. I don't yeah, know. I, I'm not uh, not sure about that one. Uh, so we could we could try to find somebody who does and get back to you. But uh, yeah, I'm not uh, not familiar with the with the defamation deformation analysis. Um, you know, yes. Uh, reminder. Uh, you know, we had a, a question about this being recorded and posted. Yes, you know, it, this is this session is being recorded, you know, we'll post it uh, as soon as we can. It's usually usually we get these posted within a week or so. Um, but we'll we'll post these um, you know, to our YouTube channel. Uh, and you know, you can you can find them there. And let's see. So we have so one of the uh, you know somebody's asking. We have these you know detecting section lines and uh, segmentation and all of that. Um, the question is, you know, do we currently have any sort of uh, feature extraction tools within, you know, within AutoCAD? Uh, so good question. And there's not anything that I think what you're asking is like, for example, can you extract, you know, this, this um, column right out or the wall or whatever. We don't have any tools in AutoCAD that actually let you convert existing point cloud objects into AutoCAD objects. 
of what I showed you where you create geometry, you snap to key points, um, you know, draw along a face by automatically changing your UCS, that's what you can do in AutoCAD. Okay. <coughs> no, sorry about that. Uh, I will say that, you know, from the recap side, um, you know, kind of stay tuned. We're going to be, you know, as we move forward, we're going to be rolling out more and more services that interact with your point clouds over the coming year. Um, so, you know, I'm not uh, not going to specifically call anything out, but, uh, you know, you'll definitely see more tools for, you know, working with your point cloud data coming from the AutoCAD or from the recap side as well, um, you know, in the near future. Um, let's see. So, yeah, so Heidi, the, um, some of these new tools that you showed, um, how many of these are, you know, brand new for AutoCAD 2016? You know, how many of these are available to, you know, uh, users of previous versions? Can you, can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, that's a good question. I'll, I'll do my best. Um, so <clears throat> a lot of the 3D point cloud Object snaps are new in 2016. Any of these um, corner nearest to cylinder um, edge, pretty much all of these, I believe, are new. We had a few like nearest to plane, perpendicular. I think there were a few of these that were available in 2015. Uh, I don't think before 2015 that we had any of those other than just snapping to just a point um, was all you could do in the very first release, which I think was maybe AutoCAD 2011. Um, other things that are new to 2016, but this section um, line where we created the section plane, so any support of being able to cut through a point cloud is completely new to AutoCAD 2016. Um, transparency is new to 2016, I think. <laughs> After a while I work in it so much I forget what's, what's new and what's not. Um, also the crop states, being able to, you could crop previously, but being able to save it to named crop states is new in 2016. So I think those are the main, main things. All right. Great. Great. Thank you. Um, so we have time for, yeah, let's try to get maybe one more. Um, just trying to find a good one here. Um, Hmm, tough choice. Uh, so we have, um, you know, you you showed some of the, uh, like you showed the the ability to snap to, you know, like that uh, the cylinder, the um, you know the the curved shape of the, um, you know, the curved shape of the uh, the that kind of parking lot there to, to create the roofs. Um, you know, you, you talked about the ability to snap to, you know, uh, other cylinder objects and stuff. So for instance, you mentioned piping. Could you, could you talk a little more about, um, you know, we have a question about using, using that with, with more of a, um, you know, a, a heavy pipe sort of uh, setting. Could you use that, for instance, to help draw your pipes and all of that, I think is what the question is about. Yeah, definitely. So I don't have, unfortunately, this drawing, other than the curve right here, this drawing doesn't have any really good examples. There are a few cylindrical shapes, like some of the signposts might be, or the handrails. Unfortunately, I think they're just the detail because they're so small. There's not enough of a curve shape for it detect to detect it. Um, but some of the other files, not this one, some of the other files that I've worked with, um, you know, on the interior where it's a pipe, you know, maybe six inches or so um, in diameter, uh, it detects it just just fine. And I can't, I don't have one here to show you, but it would it literally works just like if you had a cylinder. I'm just going to draw an AutoCAD cylinder. Um, so literally, it's it's as if you had a cylinder, and as as long as it gets enough points, you know, even though the scanner might be located like right here where my cursor is, as long as it gets enough points where it can determine, you know, that that is a, a circular shape, even if it's only got it from one side, it can determine that that's a cylindrical shape. And then, even though this is of course an AutoCAD object, but it really is just the same. If you turn on that point cloud object snap to snap to nearest of center line of cylinder, then um, it would be 
you know, if you want to kind of trace along these pipes, then you could do the same process you would in AutoCAD. You would draw a line, you know, snapping to the, the along the center of that cylinder. And again, I'm just pretending to do this because this is actually an AutoCAD object. And then you could use, um, you know, if it's detecting maybe the edge of that pipe or depending how you set your UCS, you could draw a circle, you know, from that, that um, center line that you've created using your point cloud object snaps and um, snap, in this case, and if you're using point cloud, you could snap to the node on that point cloud because this isn't actually a point cloud, I'll snap to the quadrant. But it would be the same, um, the same idea. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this cylinder. And now you would end up, you know, from your point cloud, you would end up with this key geometry, and then you could sweep or extrude or however you want to get the circle along that, that piping path. So hopefully that gives you an example without having an exact <laughs> point cloud cylinder to work with. Yeah, no, I think that's good. And I, I lied. I, I said that would be our last question, but I really like this one. So I want to make sure that uh, that I ask this one. Uh, so, you know, in recap, you have the ability to create all of these, you know, different uh, measurements and markups and annotations and all of that. You know, we, we saw that um, with the, with the uh, I believe, the, the point cloud manager, um, you know, we had the, the regions and the location and the scan positions that were all represented. Um, what sorts of, you know, are the measurements, annotations, you know, markups, are any of those also synced over from recap into AutoCAD? That is a good question, and I believe they are. If you've added notes or, or um, dimensions, measurements, I think they come in. I'm 99% sure, but I haven't tried that for a while. So I don't know, Eric, if you... Yeah, added... so so I, I will... Uh... Uh, yeah, those those do come over. Um, you know, we have we have excellent support in AutoCAD for uh, most. I I believe I don't recall if um, if all of the the. Uh, in, in fact, I don't think the, the 2D animate or uh, markups rather come over um, the the real view markups. Um, but the the 3D markups, yes, I believe uh, the the measurements and the notes, all of those things uh, should should come over just fine. So. Uh, and we did get clarification on the deformation analysis uh, a digital elevation model uh, does that so, so it's, it sounds nope. I'm reading this like the uh, like the gradient ramp um, you know for for elevations to kind of show um, yeah digital elevation model to show the height and lower value of facades seeing the bricks in different colors yeah we, we may still have to get back to you on that but uh, I, I I do I think understand what you're asking about um, I'm just not entirely sure how to set that up within AutoCAD yeah let me just show a little bit if I if I think I understand too um... And I don't know the exact value, values to use in this drawing, but I think, you know, using a common, I mean, we don't have any tools specifically for that, but I think this might be what, you know, what they're asking about. So here I've just done a section, you know, an elevation, a section through the, um, through the model. And you can see, as I was mentioning before, that in this particular design, it would be really important to know where the stage is if you create your new building kind of right off at the same elevation. So here, you know, we could do a slice like I, I mentioned before, I'll just do a, a thin, oops, change this to a slice, do a thin, maybe that's too thin for us to really see what's going on, so let's try 50. That way we can at least see see something. Um, uh oh, where'd it go? <laughs> and do back there. Okay, so if we select that section plane, there we go. Um, all right, so here we can see our thin slice. Now the elevation, I don't have, I don't know exactly what the, the values are in this drawing where it's been inserted or anything, but if we select that point cloud, ah, 
trying here. All right, let me just erase the section. Select that point cloud and then using our visualization tools. Um, this again was really important in this design um, to be able to see the elevation. And let's just try changing it to gradient, try spectrum, and um, see what that does. Okay, so we can start seeing the elevation here. Maybe we try and change um, change it to, let's say, zero maximum elevation, let's say, I don't know, 20 or 10 feet. I'm just kind of making some of this up, but let's see how these values work. There we go. So say you knew that the, the floor, the key location on the floor was at zero or negative 10 or whatever it is, the elevation. Um, then you could enter that in and we could even narrow this down even further if we go back here to our color mapping. Um, maybe we want it to just you know, be at two feet. So we get that a very thin um, display there indicating to us and then we can start modeling from there. You know, start creating our floor or draw a little line segment or whatever it is. So hopefully that maybe answers some of, some of the questions there with that task. <laughs> Uh-oh, did I lose you? Oh, sorry, I uh, muted myself. Um, so one thing I actually can uh, can comment on, you know, as I said, I don't know specifically how to do this in AutoCAD, but um, for instance, a tool like Memento, um, you can you can do some of this uh, this change analysis um, using our photo base tools. Um, so here we're looking at you know at point clouds from you know from laser scans, but uh, you know just just for the sake of you know trying to answer this question as best as best as I can, um, if you look at our Memento tools, so that's memento.autodesk.com, you can find the information on it, uh, find the download link and all of that. You can actually use photographs, and so something like a you know a wall or a facade, if you um, you know if you model that from photogrammetry, we do have tools built into Memento to do some of that change analysis. So if you, uh, you know, if you take two, uh, you know, take uh, maybe model the building, you know, months apart or something, you can, you can analyze that. You can analyze those two meshes to look for, you know, those sorts of changes over time. So that that is something, like I said, I don't know within the context of AutoCAD specifically, but you know, with our Memento tool, I do know, um, you know, we can we can get to some of those options. So not to not to derail too much, but um, you know, just for like I said, just for the sake of trying to trying to give the best answer I can, um, I know you can definitely use those tools. So, all right, well we're at uh, we're at the hour now, so I think I think it really is time to wrap things up now. You know, again, I thank you to Heidi. This was great. Um, lots of really good information. You know, thank you to everybody who joined us. You know, again, feel free to reach out to us. Send us an email. You know, recap community at autodesk .com. We'll be more than happy to uh, to. You know, get you some more answers if you have additional questions, if you have feedback for us, you know, other sessions you'd like to see, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Feel free to reach out. You know, really great having you all here and uh, look for the recording soon. Thanks again, Heidi. All right. Thank you.